what's up what's going on how y'all doing how y'all feeling let's get down to the situation let's talk about couples retreat it is going down there's a whole lot happening especially when we talk about fallon and Jalen relationship there's a whole lot going on in this whole situation where we have Jalen in tears basically crying about not having a father and not having a father there for him you know actually to show him how to be a man so basically he's trying to do everything he can to be a man for fallon and he feels like he's a failure. And he also describes Fallon as basically he's intimidated by her because she keeps throwing that he's he's immature. He's too young. He got to grow up. He don't know much. Like, Lord have mercy. And so this has been going on in their relationship. And it just seems like he is tired of it. So he's been out here in these streets. He's been out here, you know, just not coming home. Because he feels like he's being mistreated and he doesn't know how to talk to Fallon, that he feels terrified. I was like, Lord have mercy, what is going on? And then Fallon, on the other hand, she's talking to another castmate and she's basically saying that Jalen comes home at 5 a.m., he sometimes 8 a.m., so he's out there in the streets. Like, if he's not coming home, you know, until 8 o'clock in the morning. Like, what is he doing at 8 o'clock in the morning? Only thing open them late is some legs, baby. So it seems like he has had it up to here. And basically, he doesn't care about the repercussions that he could be facing when he comes home to Fallon. Because he just kind of like giving up on the relationship. And he doesn't feel like he's worthy of Fallon because of how she talks to him and how she doesn't appreciate him. And that's how he feels, especially after him taking care of Fallon, her two sisters, and her three children, and then the child and the daughter that they have together. So he's taking care of like eight people. And basically, it's not appreciated at all. You know, you sometimes you can't get a man to take care of anybody. He's taking care of you, your kids, and your sister's child. Like, what is really going on? Like, yes, this is a whole crazy situation. And um, Fallon said when she woke up in the morning that Jalen said to her while they was on the show that he's, like, terrified to talk to her. And she was like, what? You're terrified to talk to me? And he was like, yeah, because, like, you talk down to me. You make me feel like I'm not good enough. And then Fallon had an epiphany, and she basically says, oh, my God, I used to date old men, and they used to treat me like too young. I don't know nothing. And she was like, am I doing this to Jalen? So she's realizing that she's actually treating Jalen that way, and she's not denying it. Like, Lord have mercy, Jalen did not know what he was getting into. Jalen did not grow up with his father. He just has a mother. And, you know, he feels, you know, bad about that as well. So he wants to please Fallon. He wants to be everything that his everything his mother didn't have he wanted to do that with Fallon but he's saying that Fallon doesn't respect him and she says that she don't respect him either because the old man that she used to date used to do that to her so is she talking about Simon I was like Lord and she was like well the way they used to treat me I felt like I'm treating Jalen that way mm -mm -mm. so that boy is going through it in that house he is 23 years old but when the show so yeah he was going through a lot over there and you know fallon she has some issues as far as adhd she suffered emotional trauma just trauma period they lost the baby together so much is going on and i think she wanted to have this ha happy ever after with Jalen, but he's only 23 what does she think that she was really gonna be able to kind of tame him and control him and the form of control was putting him down and making him feel like he wasn't good enough for her and she was like his savior and everything and it's an honor to be with her mm, mm, mm. so she was using the same treatment that she got from the old men and was using it out here on Jalen but how does she think that a 23 years old was going to fulfill everything that she wanted he don't even know what she wants he don't even know how to give it to her he's never been in a relationship like this before child and then why isn't Fallon able to you know just tell her mother no my sisters can't move in or bar her sisters from moving into her house like that's her relationship she's supposed to be the oldest the eldest person person in the relationship and she already knew it was a bad idea why did she let it go down like that's mm, mm, mm. so there's a whole lot going on in this situation y'all i was like mm, mm, mm. 
And then, you know, when it comes to Jalen, he was actually breaking down and crying. And you have Ronnie. Ronnie said to Jalen, hey, listen, you. So, I wish I was as mature. I wish I was a nice guy like you. I wish I was just you when I was 23. You were so mature. You're so intelligent. You're so knowledgeable. You're so this, you so that. And then you got Fallon basically saying that he needs to grow up. He's immature. He's this and that. And then we have these men that are on the show praising you know Jalen and he's like breaking down he's feeling so honored to have men you know praise him I was like Lord have mercy like you could like Jalen is a child's girl like what's going on would you want your sons today a woman like you with all this stuff that you got going on and everybody living up in the house would you want that for your sons you would say no but in any event Jalen is crying as he's talking to the therapist and everything. And, you know, he just basically feels like he ain't ish. And it's just so sad to see that. And, um, you know, he doesn't know if their relationship is going to last, if it's not going to last. And so the counselor asks Jalen, um, are you a real man? And Jalen was like, I don't know what a real man is because I didn't have a real man raise me. I was like, Lord, have mercy. Jalen was like, I don't know what a real man is because I haven't had a real man raise me. And I was just like, Lord, have mercy. And Jalen basically says, um, I don't know. And the doctor says, you are a real man. You are a good man. And it just broke him down even more basically to hear them worse because he's been hearing that he ain't no good that's so sad y'all let's get to shamari and ronnie devoe with this whole situation so they sitting down they have a dinner and everything okay and now ronnie basically is telling shamari that he wants some more he wants some affection he wants some love he wants some tender loving care because on the last episode um they were both asked is their sexual relationship going to last 10 years from now, like their intimacy, you know, if it doesn't change? Or can it last the test of time? And Ronnie was like, no. Shamari was like, yes. And so now, you know, Shamari's asking him about, like, what's going on? Why you say that? And he was like, I want you to rub my head. I want you to rub my feet. I want you to tap me on the shoulders, rub my back, you know, give me a massage. Like, I want some affection. It just doesn't have to be sex. And if it doesn't change, you already know it ain't going to last 10 years you know, from now. And so he's basically letting her know what's up. So he is not getting, you know, all the sex that he wants. And also he wants some intimacy. He just wants, you know, to cuddle and things of that nature. And Shamari said, oh, let me tell you, you know what my love language is? My love language is, you know, I got to see you to do it. Like you got to be here. So basically she's saying that you ain't home. You always on the road, you on tour. So therefore, like, I don't feel like that loving type. I don't feel like hugging you you and kissing you and all this other stuff because you ain't never here i was like girl this is your response you should have just got up and be like baby and rubbed his head and kissing and say it's gonna change okay but in any event she got a point to prove because she wants ronnie to be at home and basically ronnie said what are you talking about i gotta pay the bills this is how we eat child like and he basically says i'm on the road i only got 40 shows we got 300 days that i'm home at the crib so yes i don't know what the problem is i don't know what's going on shamari's not happy okay and shamari basically saying that there's things that she wants to do so shamari wants to build a career for herself you know she wants to be back at, at the top of her game and she's not there and i believe she thinks ronnie can help her get there but she's not explaining what type of top of the game does she want to do music do she want to do entertainment do she wants to do commentary like what is it that you want to do shamari and what is he not doing basically she's saying that he needs to help with the kids and then ronnie turns around and tell her that she is full of ish and he don't want to hear that because that ain't the truth and he basically tells her that she's using the kids as an excuse not to do what she need to do i was like lord have mercy ronnie like why are you seeing all lots of her so basically if there's an excuse 
or she's using the kids as an excuse. Why is she using the kids as an excuse? And what's her fear? What is she afraid of? And how does she think that you can help her through that? Okay. But Ronnie said, not today. I need you to rub my feet and kiss my head and rub my hands. Okay. And then he proceeds to tell Shamari when he met her, she was on top of her game. She was moving and she was shaking. And she ain't been moving and she ain't been shaking in a while. And he said he wished he can retire. He wish he can tell the boys. He can tell them that he ain't going on tour no more. I was like, child, this whole conversation is a mess. And he was like, I wish I could tell them that I don't need to do no tour no more. Shamari's going to do this. He goes, I wish I could retire and lay around and have you take care of everything. I was like, child, ooh, baby. He basically said, girl, you are ungrateful. And if he was doing what you needed to do, baby, I'd be laid up in the house. But I got to work because you have fears. I was like, child, Lord, this is a whole mess. This is a whole mess. Y'all better work this out for real, for real. You two better work this out. So we get to Kendra. Kendra is told to get over the situation, child, to move on. It's an old situation. Why are you drumming up old things? Like, Lord have mercy, y'all. Like, you know, Jock done had a baby on the girl, okay? They separated for a little bit. He ended up, ended up getting somebody pregnant, not using protection. And now, you know, since she's married to him, she's a part of that child's life. So she's going to have to split her money even more ways between, you know, Jock, baby mamas, and all the kids that he got, okay? So, you know... It it kind of aggravates her because it's a constant reminder. It's not like, you know, there's no reminder. There's a child to remind her of Jock being infidelity. You know what I mean? So she's taking her time to get over it, but girl, just get over it. I don't know how you're going to get over it, but just get over it. Just move on. You got him. Okay. He's sucking your toes on TV. You wanted him. You got him. He's trying to change, you know, but what can you really expect from Jock? Okay. Kendra knows there's going to be something else, some kind of scandal, something else come with Jock. You already know it is. We all know. But you chose to say, I do an okay to Jock. So, you know, we're going to pray for you, sis. And then we get to the whole situation where AJ creates, you know, a little situation or a scenario where she got the Magic Boys or whatever the case is and Magic Mike Boys and dancing. And Apollo's not appreciating this booty dance, nor is Ronnie appreciating this booty dance, okay? But the husbands and the boyfriends are supposed to, you know, entice and spice up their relationship and their marriage by dancing on their women, okay? And the girls dancing on the girls. And we get Jock, he does his favorite signature move and he loves the toes, okay? And then we get on to, you know, Ronnie, he is between the legs, okay? He's doing his move, but Ronnie dances a lot on stage. And so Ronnie could have did a whole, he could have did a whole set. He could have did a whole dance out here in these streets, you know what I mean? Because he knows how to dance. And then we get to, you know, Apollo. Apollo killed it, okay? He was the best one. He had Shireen, you know, flipped up, okay? Then he picked her up, okay? Oh, yes, Apollo was doing it. And Apollo, you know, actually said that he was really happy to actually not be uptight and actually to let go of things and just to be, you know, easygoing because he's on one. And then we get to... Breezy, she basically just stares at her girlfriend. She didn't give a dance or nothing. I thought she was, you know, auditioning for another acting role. Because, baby, I know it's a seductive, sexy look. You're looking into somebody's soul that you love. But you got on sunglasses, child. But she did kiss her girlfriend or whatever. But it is what it is. <laughs> and then we got Breezy. She also calls her Apollo. And basically saying that, you know, some of these people got real problems here. She ain't got these type of problems. But she also talk about Apollo. Like something ain't right with him. Like, you know, him walking around uptight all the time. And him being uptight. Like that can't be good. And basically she's saying Apollo act like he's still locked up. Like he's still in prison. And she know what that is. And she talked about manipulation. And so right now, I don't think Breezy is actually feeling Apollo at all. And basically, she's calling him out. And she's talking about him again, okay? After she called him out of being controlling, which he agreed that he was controlling. And, you know, 
he was called out on the situation, but she still got her foot on Apollo's neck, okay? She's not letting it slide. 